How are you guys doing? Good, feel free to stretch a little bit. There's no intermission, so take advantage of this time however you need. Um, and I have to say, I have been to many of my dad's concerts, but I've never been to one quite like this. So it's really an honor to get to experience worship in so many different ways through, you know, musical ministry and through art and this calligraphy. And now I want to share a little bit of poetry with all of you. Um, I'm not a poet, I'll let you know, but I am a lover of words. And so I want to share some words by one of my favorite poets, Maya Angelou. And she has this poem called Still I Rise, and it's really profound. So if you have some time, I encourage you to read the whole thing. But I've uh, just left some excerpts from this poem that I want to share with you. So she says, did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise. I rise, I rise, as my dad likes to say, <laughs> that'll make a Baptist shout. <laughs> and as you can see in this poem, and as you can see through, um, if you're familiar with Dr. Maya Angelou's life, her story is not one that is comfortable or easy. It has a lot of painful parts to it. And so as I was reflecting on these words and reflecting on her life, I had to ask myself, what gives someone the audacity to rise? Or maybe a better question is, who gives us the audacity to rise? And that's just what I want to take the next few minutes to talk to you about and encourage you in, is how do we rediscover our own audacity to rise? It's no secret that in a room this size, we are all facing various battles and victories of our own. And I would guess that for some of you today might feel like one of the best days of your life. And for others of us today might feel like the worst. But even here, God is with us. I was talking to someone just a few days ago and we were sharing some of our life stories and we began to notice a common theme that our moments of greatest transformation often came after our moments of greatest pain. And we began to notice that in the moments where we felt the most broken down, God was actually building us up. And as I was thinking about that further, I realized that this is at the heart of the gospel. At the heart of the gospel, we find the cross. And in Christ's moment of being broken down because of our own brokenness, he was proclaiming to us our victory. At the cross, we find our audacity to rise. And so I want to challenge you this morning because I know sometimes we hear words like this and it can sound good in the moment, but sometimes it's hard to believe when you're facing a battle or even a victory of your own. So how do we continue to rediscover the audacity within ourselves to remember to have resilience, to remember to rise? I want to challenge us to do this by remembering God, remembering who God has been to us, who God is to us, and who God promises he will be to us. In the African-American tradition, there's a popular song called For Every Mountain. And the lyrics state, for every mountain you've brought me over, for every trial you've seen me through, for every blessing, hallelujah, for this I give you praise. And sometimes we just have to sit in that, don't we? Sometimes we just have to call to mind who God has been, who God is, and who God will be to us. Because in remembering, we are able to face our moments, knowing that he is the one that gives us the victory. God is the one that gives us the audacity to rise. As my dad mentioned, uh, like two years ago, I self-published the book, 52 Cups of Coffee. And what some people do, but know, but many people don't, is that that book actually started in a dark season of my life. I was questioning my purpose. I was questioning what God had in store for me. And I felt God invite me into this act of remembrance through writing. And so I began writing, and then I began sharing, and then eventually it turned into this book. And I realized that that was exactly what God was doing for me. He was taking a moment of my brokenness and he was turning it into a moment of great victory. And I want to propose to each of you today that God is doing the same thing for you. That no matter where you feel, if you are celebrating and today feels amazing, or if you are mourning and today feels very broken for you, God is doing something. 
And so I want, us, I want to invite us with this next song to remember who God is. As I was you know, preparing and thinking about these words last night, I called my dad and I said, Dad, are you playing for every mountain tomorrow? And he was like, yeah, I am. And so I said, okay, will you play that after I speak? And so he kind of switched the schedule for me. So thank you, Dad. <laughs> um, but as we listen to the words of this song, I want to challenge us to, yes, to hear them. But I also want to encourage you to take this moment to remember who has God been to you? Who is God to you in this moment? Or who does God promise he will be? I promise you that this will give us the audacity to keep rising in our own stories. Thank you. <laughs> 